Hi folks, back out in the log cabin. I'm still not well, but I thought I feel like I've got a bit more go in me today, so I'm out tinkering and doing some other stuff. I'll show you what I'm up to. Right, well, as you know, not been well since November really, with these blinking viruses I've had. And someone says, oh, you're always ill, you're always getting viruses. Well, we've got six grandchildren. They go to school, they pick up stuff. There's always something going around. We, we're, we're close to our grandchildren. We see them quite a lot. And we just tend to pick this stuff up. And I'm a great believer of once you've had a virus, it strengthens your immune system anyway. So when we get a bit older, we're going to have strong immune systems. <laughs> That's my theory anyway. Right, so anyway, I did tell you in my last video that uh, I took the cylinder head down for the Reliant Regal to be... Uh, skim I've had that back now let me show you it so there we go lovely and skim there it's in absolutely fantastic condition now let's hold it up to the light so you can get it properly there we go that's better isn't it so yeah there's uh, nothing wrong with that that's gonna to be totally flat now and I'm well happy to put out on all the waterways as you know have been cleaned out on this and uh, it's just a matter of obviously giving it a good clean up now I haven't cleaned it up yet as you can see and then it will be reassembly uh, and I want to get this back together as you know so yeah I'm well pleased with that that's one part the engine's still sitting over here as you can probably see I'm on waiting uh, finishing this off but uh, again this has been sitting there for ages now so I'm, I, I want to get this assembled so I can get it uh, back together there's a few things I've got to get for it now this was the engine that I got that um, I didn't have any parts for so I'm going to need a new distributor for it don't forget this is a 750cc engine this one so I want to know by you people out there who actually have done 750 engines, what's the best distributor for that? I want to turn this into a negative earth instead of positive earth and also electronic ignition. So any information on a kit, I've seen a kit on eBay for about 99 pounds. Apparently there's a couple of types of distributors there. I'm not too sure exactly what one this needs. I'm also going to need a carburetor. Uh, for this engine as well. I've got the manifold as you probably know which is a uh, Did I have a manifold on this? I can't remember. I'll have to check the video out But failing that I'm gonna need a carburetor. I think it's an SU carb on this one So uh, I'm gonna have to, I've had a look on eBay. There's a couple on there at the moment for about 55 pounds uh, So I've just got to know the right type to put on it for this engine bearing in mind as I said it is a 750 I've got a starter motor on the old engine as you know the one that come out of it but I haven't got on this one, so I'm going to get a brand new starter motor for this. So that's another thing I need as well. And I also want to convert it to an alternator. So there's, I don't know whether there's bracketry or something. I did go into this once and I laid it all down uh, what I needed to get. But of course that was a long time ago and I've forgotten. So uh, that's just something I'm going to have to get on the top one. And also I'm going to need a new clutch for this. And I've also got to do the conversion for the, uh, the bell housing for the uh, clutch actuation arm. Uh, to with the old gearbox that I had on the Reliant Regal to convert it to the new style of uh, push-pull type uh, lever mechanism. So I've got to basically convert that into the new bell housing for this gear, uh, this gearbox here. So that's all coming up. Now you might remember about the uh, sandblasting cabinet. As you know, we made this modification, which was this plastic box container with a cyclone. Uh, set up there and this is actual first time I've used it. I've also cleaned the glass as well And as you also know, I've got the vac king uh, Vacuum cleaner attached to it as well now, which again sits over there I had a Henry Hoover there before but as I say this is a lot more powerful and as you can see in here at the moment I've got the uh, Fuel petrol tank which I'm working on So this is something I'm sandblasting at the moment but uh, the great thing is is that uh, with this vacuum cleaner and this setup it gives you great visibility in the actual sandblasting unit itself I also put the new plastic insert on the inside now and I think you'll agree it's a bit, it's a bit condensation in there at the moment but I think you'll agree that uh, it's definitely a whole lot better than what it was and the thing with that hoover is or that vacuum cleaner is that when it's running it keeps it as clear as this it doesn't fog up at all because it extracts so well that it sucks out all the crap in the in the air and leaves you with a clear view so you actually sandblast it with that sort of uh, visibility which is great right so i've not had this apart yet i've been sandblasting probably for about 
15 to 20 minutes. Let's see if this has actually done anything and see if it's actually saved my vacuum cleaner by collecting any dust that's been in the air. Here we go, look. Oh yeah, look at that, look. That's working a treat, look. That is pure dust from stuff that's come out. Look at that, look. Absolutely fantastic. So all it's doing, this would have been blocking up my filters in my vacuum cleaner. And it's a big nuisance because as soon as you get that in the filters, the vacuum cleaner stops working efficiently. It all fogs up inside and you're left in a situation where you've got to keep getting the vacuum cleaner out and actually cleaning the filters, which is a real nuisance. So that is definitely worth doing. If, you're, if you've got a sandblasting cabinet, like I have, get yourself one of these Cyclone things. I'll leave a link in the description below this video where you can pick them up on Amazon. Get a plastic container and just jiggle it about and make this your sandblasting catchment tray rather than it going into the actual vacuum cleaner itself. So as you can probably see over here, this is where I'm filming a retro hats video at the moment. Um, I've got a separate camera for that, as you can see. There's my Canon uh, M50 camcorder, which I'm basically getting used to now. I had a lot of problems, first of all, uh, when I first started using it because the, the, the focus kept zooming in and out. But what I'm in the process of doing now is actually switching it quickly over to manual focus when I want to zoom in on something. And then I can manually set up something. And it's, it's literally, once you know where the controls are, it makes life a lot easier. I was relying on autofocus, first of all. And as you probably know, the camera I'm filming you on at the moment, which is my GoPro Hero 5, I think this one. Is it 5? Yeah, Hero 5, this one. And this is the normal one, which I was filming all my vlogs on, but it's not really good for close-up work. That's why I had to get something like this. And, uh, yeah, so as I say, I'm doing the video for the fuel can at the moment, which is an old 1950s fuel can. So that's the thing I'm restoring at the moment. I've actually got some of this stuff. Now, I see a lot of people using this stuff. It's MC51 Rust. What is it called? Illuminate Rust. It says you could do it three ways by soaking, in other words, dropping something in this, wiping the fluid onto something, or also spraying it. Well, I did spray this fuel tank uh, liberally. I've just put it in one of these containers. This is a clear liquid. And the thing with this stuff, apparently, it's totally safe. It's not toxic or anything. It's actually quite dear. I think a container of this size, four litres, is about 20 pounds. So I did try squirting it over the fuel tank and then wrapping it with some cloths. Uh, let me show you. As you can see, these are the cloths. These are still saturated in the fluid. And you can see the rust colour that's come off there. So obviously it's done something, but that rust on that tank was really thick and heavy. And uh, it didn't actually do a good job, hence me now sandblasting it. But I will give this a bit more further testing because I've seen other people use this it's on YouTube and it really cleans up bulks well. I think it's going to be best if you soak stuff in it. And I will use it as a container, like there's another stuff called Ever, Ever, what's it called? Ever Rust or something like that? Well, you buy that in a big container and you basically keep it in your workshop and you just drop stuff in it as and when you need it, pull them out and they're totally clean. So buying it like this, 20 pounds for something like that, you can buy a big tub of it for 45 pounds. I think that probably, if you're gonna do rust or restoration sort of stuff, something like this is gonna be handy because it's gonna be something where you can just throw your bits in, leave it and then pull them out or whatever. I do use vinegar, as you can see, I've used quite a few different rust removing techniques. I've used vinegar before. Vinegar works quite well, but I find that vinegar does deteriorate pretty quickly. In other words, once you've used it two times or something, the strength of the acid or in the vinegar or whatever tends to go and, and it basically becomes useless. Plus it does stink as well. There's no smell to this, this stuff. Uh, and there's nothing toxic in this as well. So that's fine. And I've also used electrolysis to remove rust. That again works well. I've also used the sandblasting cabinet, which I use quite a lot, as you probably know. So I've got a few different ways of creating, uh, removing rust. And depending on... Uh, the application will depend on what type of rust it is, whether it's heavy rust or whatever. Uh, as I say, I've yet to use this on a, a product where I can drop a part in, for example, say something like this. This ain't, this, ain't, this is brass, this won't rust. 
but you can drop something in, in that, for example, like a big bolt or whatever, and it'll clean it up lovely sort of thing. So I'm still testing this at the moment, but as I say, for squirting it on and leaving it on heavily rusted items, it doesn't quite do what it says on the tin where you can wipe it off. It says it's safe for your skin, environmentally friendly, biodegradable, safe on most paints, and it's got no VOCs and it's non-toxic. So that's the biggest benefit of that, because a lot of um, chemicals have a toxicity to them. So let's have a look here. MC51 can be applied by soaking, wiping, or spraying. Soak for heavier rust. Oh, it tells you put it in a plastic tub. For light rust, you, you wipe for light rust. Soak a wipe with MC51 solution and apply to the rust area you're using a circular motion until the rust is removed. That's basically a little bit of surface rust. Although, as you, as you can definitely see, it's definitely discoloured these white cloths or whatever. But the rust was heavy rust, what I was using it on. So uh, do keep an eye out for this in some future videos. Uh, it, it can be obviously reused. If you put it in a big pot and then you're throwing bolts into it and then taking them out again, obviously you can you can sort of use it again and again sort of thing. But just to pour this and then throw it away, that's not what you're supposed to do, but I don't think, because as I say, that's a 20 pounds uh, bottle of fluid I've got there. Anyway, that's another story. And one I'll show you when we come to do another video with it properly. Now, what else have I got to show you? Anything else? Um, I haven't got another car doing yet. I'll, I'll be doing another car, very, uh, little miniature car very shortly. A lot of you like the new colour on that one, that purple. And I've actually shown that car to a few people, that little Renault, uh, was it a Renault? The little pur purple car I did, I can't remember what it was called now. Alpha, that was, it was an Alpha Carabao, I think it was. And they thought it was original paint. So that's a, that's a testament to the sort of detail of what you can actually produce. And this is what I've got here. This is the little spray gun which I've got. It's called an Evolution. Uh, again, I've got a few different, there's a few different things here. I think it's got a 0.3 tip in it at the moment, this one. And uh, as you can see, it's a lovely little thing. And very, very easy to use as well. And they're also very easy to keep clean. So that's another benefit of these little spray, spray guns and it's, it's actually a lot easier to spray with one of these I find than a normal spray gun because you've got less chance of getting runs so if you if you actually paint it if you do repairs on something and it's only a small item one thing I found with when you're using spray can paint for example is that that comes out so fast that that's when you get your problem with the flooding and, and, and the runs and all that this is utterly controllable and it's a lot more smaller scale and if you actually watch when you spray something with a can you get a big jet of paint come out over a little model for example and the paint goes right and sprays right behind it and you're wasting so much paint well you don't get that with a, a, a little artist brush like that and it's a fantastic piece of kit to use anyway I'm starting to ramble let's have a look what else we got in the other side with the Reliant Regal so over here I've got me rocker arm to clean up I've got me all my valves and my oil seals and stuff to go back on and that's something which I'm going to be refurbishing pretty shortly. I've got the prop shaft over the back here. I've still got the door hinges here. These were the original door hinges of the Red Iron Regal. And as you can see, they're still free, but uh, they're going to need painting, obviously. But uh, I will give them... Did I sandblast them? I must have sandblasted them, yeah. But I will give them another go because, obviously, for some reason, I never sandblasted them on the inside. So I don't quite know why I wouldn't have done that, but... Uh, that's the door stuff for the uh, Reliant Regal. There's loads of other stuff to do, but now, as I say, this was the main thing. Get this thing up and running now, so that I can actually get somewhere with this engine now, and I can actually sandblast this now, to be honest with you, to get this uh, all nice and clean. So uh, that's something which I'm going to be doing in the near future as well. Anyway, this was just a little update video. I'm going to be doing uh, my petrol can restoration video, which I'm working on at the moment. I'll have another little model car up very soon. Uh, what one am I going to do next? I've got a Mark II Ford Cortina, which has got a broken window pillar at the front, so um, I'm going to have a go at repairing that. And uh, that'll probably be the next one I'll restore, so keep your eyes out for that one. And I know a lot of you want to see the uh, the transit police van. And uh, yeah, that's all coming up. So I'm trying to get a few more videos out now. I've also got work to do around the house as well. We're decorating the dining room out, as you probably know. We've got Tracy, our daughter, living here at the moment till before she goes to um, live in Cyprus for three years. So we've got the kids here as well. So we're doing a lot of babysitting and stuff like that. We've not been well, as you know, but we are on the men now. So thank God for that about time. 
I seem to have had everything going over the last couple of months, but I'm coming through it now, and it feels like all the purging is coming. Well, I'm purging my system basically. I'm cleansing all my system out. And uh, what can happen is, is that all the viruses and old stuff that's been in your system for years and years, when you start to cl eat cleanly, for example, which is what I'm starting doing, I'm basically eating very, very little, well, vir virtually no carbs, definitely no refined carbs at the moment, which means bread, potatoes, pasta, rice, all that sort of stuff. If I'm eating carbs, I'm getting it through my vegetables, and that's green leafy vegetables, basically, and uh, that's where I'm getting most of my, well, all the carbs that I'm having. But I'm on a very low carb diet at the moment, as I say, but and it's purging my system of all the crap, so my resistance is now coming back. I'm starting to feel a bit more spirited now, so uh, anyway, I am starting around, but I've got work to do. It's Sunday afternoon now, and I've got to finish this off because I'm going to have my roast dinner when I get back in without the potatoes. And the Yorkshire pudding. <laughs> anyway, thanks very much. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, bye for now. <laughs>